ever wondered how the church views mystical apparitions? If you've seen any of our Marian Apparition series videos, you may have pondered this. So today, let's unpack it. First off, an apparition is when someone appears to a living person, and that someone is usually um, Our Lady or Jesus, angels, or various saints. True mystics can have various other types of experiences, including being shown things in their mind's eye, or hearing messages or voices without actually seeing an apparition, and these are called locutions. Many claim to have experiences like this, but how do we know who to believe? This is where our mother church and a little bit of self-education come in. For the purpose of our discussion today, we are going to divide these mystical experiences into two main categories, those the church has ruled on and those it has not ruled on. So first, we'll talk about those that the church has ruled on. When a mystic or messages begin gaining enough popularity, or the heavenly visitor has a specific request, or for various other reasons, the church may choose to step in and start an investigation. The investigation is always done on a diocesan level and is led by the bishop or team that he appoints. The investigation involves reading through all of the messages and seeing whether or not there's in anything that would be contradictory to the faith. They look at associated miracles, the people involved who are receiving the messages and their mental and psychological stability, the fruits of the apparition and whether they are positive or negative, and the accuracy of the predictions made and whether or not they happened. Things like that. Once the investigation is complete, the church can rule in three main ways in regards to the supernatural origin of the apparitions. Yes, no, or no decision. Let's break these down even further. Yes means that, yes, it has been determined that they are of supernatural origin. However, it is then up to the church to decide and determine whether or not the supernatural origin is heaven or hell. If they are deemed to be from heaven, then they are given the thumbs up to be believed and supported by all, and the location is made worthy of pilgrimage. If they are determined to be from Satan or his demons, then obviously they are a no-go and the church says that all messages should henceforth be disregarded and any communication should be halted immediately. The devil can actually take the form of heavenly beings, so it's really important for the church to discern this because Satan has used this in the past as a way to actually trick believers. The second main ruling is that the church can rule in the negative and say that no, the messages are not of supernatural origin, which usually means that they're coming from a place of um, just potentially an overactive imagination of the person who's thinking that they're having these messages. They might just be confusing um, their own thoughts and thinking that perhaps that's of supernatural origin. Or sometimes people do have bad intent and they're doing things for self-promotion. Lastly, the church can rule inconclusive and basically say that more evidence is needed or they'd like to wait and see how things play out, things like that. So like I said, these are all started always on the diocesan level and they can be completed at this level. Some, however, the bishop may choose to escalate to the Vatican or the Vatican may actually decide that they want to step in and take over or assist in the investigation as well. Sometimes the bishop will make a final decision and then the Vatican or the Pope will also choose to kind of go the extra step and just affirm this decision or give their extra stamp of approval, if you will. Bishop approved apparitions or ones that the Vatican has not made any official ruling on are no less uh, are no less valid. They're just as valid as the ones that the Vatican has ruled on or that the Vatican has taken part of the investigation for. Um, generally, the Vatican ones just carry a little bit more weight because they get a little bit more publicity, but they are um, they're equally as valid. There are many authentic mystics whose apparitions are not ruled on until far after their death or ever, but their messages and their apparitions could still be just as valid. For example, the church generally chooses to wait to rule on apparitions if the messages or if the apparitions are still ongoing, 
or if there are predictions as a part of the messages of the apparitions that um, haven't been fulfilled yet because the church likes to wait and see if these um, things will actually happen as um, just as part of the consideration for their approval process. This is where self-education and prayer are important because we believers need to have some way to figure out um, what we're going to believe on some of these apparitions that haven't yet been ruled on by our mother church. Okay, so the next category. For not yet approved apparitions or no decision apparitions, the church still gives us some ways of uh, helping us out and deciding whether or not we want to choose to believe these messages. Generally, authentic seers and mystics still seek the cooperation of their local bishop because heaven respects the authority of its church. The mystics will present all of their messages to their spiritual director and their bishop and or his team just to read through. And even without opening an official investigation, a committee of the diocese or a censor of the diocese can read through these messages and then choose to give them the status of nihil obstat, which means that there is nothing in these messages that is contradictory to the faith and morals of the church and nothing is in opposition to church doctrine. Then, kind of as a further step, if he so chooses, the bishop can give his own personal stamp of approval, which is called the imprimatur. Again, it's not a guarantee, but it's a step to show that at least it's safe to see what these mystics have to say, and it could, it could potentially benefit or enhance our faith life. And it's obviously a good sign when a mystic seeks church approval. Another way in discerning this private revelation that doesn't help if the mystic is still alive, but if it's a mystic from the past, we can look to see if that person is being canonized. Like we said, sometimes private revelations aren't ever ruled on officially, but it can um, mean a lot if that said visionary is being canonized by the church. It kind of gives you a hint that the church is uh, in favor of what they have to say or is in approval of the experiences that they claim to have had. Lastly, we should consider the fruits of the apparitions and the messages in our lives. Are they having a positive impact on our faith? Are they building us up and helping us to grow in love of the Lord? Or are they giving us anxiety and simply causing us to fear and worry? Now, no Christian ever has to believe in private revelation, even the ones that are Vatican approved. As Cardinal Joseph Ratzinger, or now commonly known as Pope Benedict Emeritus, once said when he was head of the CDF, ecclesiastical approval of a private revelation has three elements. The message contains nothing contrary to faith or morals, it is lawful to make it public, and the faithful are authorized to accept it with prudence. Regardless, you could still choose to say, I'm just going to stick to sacred scripture and tradition and that's good for me and that is totally fine because that's all that's needed for uh, salvation. My thoughts are though, if heaven is actually talking to us, I'm going to listen. Thanks for tuning in today, and we hope you'll check out the rest of the videos in our Marian Apparition series to learn more about some of the church-approved Marian apparitions. Don't you? Jump up. I know we tell you not to jump, but it would be really cute. Ready? Oh.